Hello my friends and welcome to my 1000 subscriber Q&A thank you video. I got uh, three questions in that I would like to answer and as well as have an announcement at the end of the video for another way I have decided cel to celebrate finally reaching 1000 subscribers on the YouTube platform. Um, so without any waiting, let's just go ahead and get into your questions that you had for me. So number one, uh, the question was, do you have any hobbies or occupations other than YouTube? Now, in terms of occupations, I've actually jumped around between a number of part-time jobs, as it were, over the past few years, so nothing really stayed consistent outside of YouTube, and with the current times, I am currently still unemployed. And that's just the way of the world, and we're not going to dwell on it. As opposed to hobbies, which I have plenty of hobbies that don't really fall into the YouTube space and aren't what I cover on YouTube. One of those main hobbies, which has shown up on the channel, is my love for martial arts and combat sports. I try to frequent watching sporting events uh, like MMA matches, boxing matches when I can, and... In terms of the martial arts that I've actually trained in, I did three years of Taekwondo, a year of Capoeira, uh, three months of Aikido, and American boxing when I was studying abroad in Japan, and I've even done uh, some various intensives like the month-long MMA intensive course that I took before moving to Florida. So... And martial arts, combat sports is another big hobby that I don't normally talk about, but if you are interested in those things, you might also be interested in the uh, video that I made on Devil May Cry 5 and how capoeira and American boxing influenced one of the weapons and fighting styles in that game. A Some other interests that I have is I'm also very musically inclined. I did a lot of choir singing when I was growing up, and uh, that sort of manifested in more exploring taiko ensemble drumming when I was in college, or doing different cultural dances, such as the haka, uh, different kinds of hula, um, really uh, just a variety of cultural dances, but those are the two that I probably spent the most time in and that I'm the most proud of having participated in. Um, but I guess those are just a few. I, if I think of any others before the video ends, I'll go ahead and include them. But let's go ahead and move on to the second question, which is, what is my favorite ice cream flavor? And this requires actually some backup, believe it or not, because I used to be a soda jerk. I worked as a person who prepared ice cream for customers at a little ice cream shop called Ted and Wally's in downtown Omaha, Nebraska, back when I still lived in Omaha. Uh, it was... A kind of a family thing? Not really, because uh, my brother got a part-time job working there for a couple years, and then when he moved away, I followed in behind him. And Ted and Wally's is an amazing ice cream shop, and they taught me to be <laughs> a little pretentious about the different kinds of frozen dairy treats and non-dairy treats and to consider them differently. So a, uh, a sorbet and a sherbet and ice cream and custard are all different kinds of frozen treat that should not be put in one category. But if we had to ask what my favorite kind of ice cream was, it would be Atsuki, or red bean ice cream. And again, you're probably going to turn your nose up at that, uh, but what you should know is that Ted and Wally's is also really well known for not just having a huge variety of flavors, but also taking suggestions from the community about the kinds of flavors they would like to see show up in the shop, and then turning those into something that would work and very frequently taking suggestions from people and putting it into the rotation if it's specifically requested, even if it's not an extremely popular flavor. They also would like contact local breweries and make different ice creams and different desserts out of uh, local craft beers, which was something that I don't think I've seen in any other ice cream shop that I've heard of. 
I loved working there. It was so interesting. But red bean is a popular dessert in Japan, Azuki, where it's more of a, um, a sweet, uh, bean paste. You know, you mix it with a lot of sugar and boil it down to be a bit of a syrup with the chunks of bean in it or something that's more smooth. You would put them over, say, a dango, a rice, a sweet rice dumpling or some other, you know, confection. And it would be typically enjoyed that way. Or it could perhaps be like put over a bowl of shaved ice. There are so many ways to enjoy it. And the best comparison that I can make is that it is something like just vanilla, only with a deeper, richer flavor. And you've probably already had red bean prepared in a savory or salty manner to go with your dinner, or say in a chili or something like that. So yeah, there are, there are other beans out there that are dessert beans other than vanilla. And you really should explore them because Azuki is by far my 100% favorite ice cream fla flavor. I just, I love it to death and I can't get it anywhere around where I am. So, you know, I've just given up the hope of ever having it anytime soon. But if you have a chance to try some Azuki flavored ice cream or Azuki dessert anything, just jump on it. Do it. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. And then the last question that I have been asked is name two of your favorite games that you think have an S plus narrative or writing. And I'm going to, I'm going to move the goalpost on this question a little bit because I was trying to think of two games and it turns out that most of the games that I consider or have personally experienced that I think have amazing narrative and writing are things that I've already discussed on the channel. Um, so first I'll give an honorable mention because I think this is a game that has an interesting take on how it wanted to present story, but then ultimately kind of failed on the execution, and that was Asura's Wrath. I really enjoyed playing Asura's Wrath, and the way that they tried to present it as a a, a sort of episodic release of a, of a narrative that continued on with the DLC that followed the game, I think that that was an interesting idea, an attempt at a unique execution of narrative combined with gameplay, but ultimately I believe it failed because people who play games expect that when they purchase a game it is a holistic experience and don't really think that when they get something it will be incomplete unless they purchase something else along the road. Uh, and uh, the actual cutscenes were very well cinematized, but also kind of awkward. And the gameplay would vary in different forms that didn't really help you feel like you had a through line for what you were doing during all of the action. It felt like a very extended quick time event, and gamers didn't like quick time events. The combat sections, the bosses, they were the best, but that's how it went. However, an unsung hero of narrative design and storytelling that I think really ought to be, you know, lauded. Maybe it's not a masterpiece. Maybe it's not S plus, but the way that Soul Calibur games approach story was infinitely interesting to me because every character would have a kind of an overarching plot that place them somewhere in history and they would have to, you know, look for the soul edge or the soul caliber. And it was always just an excuse to get you to fight someone else on the roster. But you would also often fight, say, um, generic enemies that kind of were prefabbed out of the character creator that soul caliber has become known for. That sort of gave you a sense that maybe you were actually engaging in warfare and Soul Calibur has done many different versions of trying to present unique ways to mix the one-on-one -on -one combat of a fighting game 
with a larger overarching campaign, different war game style uh, interactions with the systems that allowed you to pick and choose fights and whether you are successful or unsuccessful in the individual match would decide how successful you are progressing through a campaign somewhat like a tactics ogre or I, I guess that's my best example, my best point of view uh, for how to describe what that was like. The one struggle that I think fighting games have with their story is that they tend not to really have like a canon storyline. There, There's a issue with canonicity where you have your character that accomplishes their goals, but in the next game, they kind of just have to choose, ah, this is the one we meant, and we're going to go forward and let every character's campaign have their own multiple conclusions that they could have happened that are all interesting. They tell unique stories. There's just never any, like, long-term, uh, long-term payoff with the nature of this kind of storytelling, but it was interesting how they adapted so many stories and tried to build character moment moments based off of a series of different sorts of interactions and different sorts of conflicts that you, the player, got to choose. So those are the three questions that were posed to me for our 1,000 subscriber Q&A. And as I said before, I have an announcement that I think is going to be very exciting for this channel. It is something I tried before, but I think this time I am much better situated to have an understanding of what a brand spanking new Discord community for this channel could be. So... I've decided that in this video and all future videos, hence, we are going to have a link to our Discord channel, which will be called doo -doo -doo -doo, the Soccer Tetris Symposium. And simply by clicking that link, you will be hoisted away into Discord and joining our server in no time. So you can talk with me, you can talk with anyone else who is a fan of this channel, and anyone who you wish. Now, there are some caveats because this is my server. It's something that I use to game with a variety of different people. So you're not just going to be talking to me, but you're going to be talking to real people with real values and real feelings. So be on your best behavior. Don't be a jerk. Follow the good human behavior rules that you have learned growing up in kindergarten. Can you do that? Yes, you can. But I'm really excited to have people come and join us. As soon as you join the server, just go ahead and send a message directly at me. Make sure to tag me so that I know you're coming from the YouTube channel. And I will go ahead and give you the correct role so that you can also be able to access the private dis discussion groups that are just for people who found the Discord server through the YouTube channel. I'm really excited about this prospect, and I hope you are too, and I hope to see you there. But that's all I have to say for this video, my friends. If you did find value in it, if you enjoyed it, please, by all means, go ahead and check out some of our other playlists. Check out the Philosophy of Games playlist and the Philobyte series that I've been doing as well, so that you can catch up on all of the different topics that this channel has discussed that you might have missed. It's easy to miss. I've been on the platform for a long old time. So thank you again. I will see you in the next video. And remember, stay true.